If you're an author or plan to be one, get excited because this podcast is for you. Book Marketing Mentors is the only podcast dedicated to helping you successfully market and sell your book. If you're ready for empowering conversations with successful marketing mavens, then grab a coffee or tea and listen in to your host, international best-selling author, Susan Friedman. Welcome to Book Marketing Mentors, the weekly podcast where you learn proven strategies, tools, ideas, and tips from the masters. Every week, I introduce you to a marketing master who will share their expertise to help you market and sell more books. Well, today, your special guest is me, Susan Friedman, the author, marketing mentor, and influencer. And I'm joined in the studio by my dear friend and colleague, Jane Malucci, who is going to play my role as host interviewing me today. So Jane, welcome. Thank you for always doing this with me. I know we're going to have fun. What are we, we talking about do. today? <laughs> we're talking about book covers because, you know, that old adage of you don't judge a book by its cover. I don't think that's really true. What do you think? I totally agree with you. You absolutely do judge a book by its cover because your cover is the gift wrapping. If you think of your book oh. as a gift, it's the wrapping and people pay attention to the wrapping. Something that I always tell my authors, Jane, is you have to be 110, 120% in love with your cover. Oh. I've known authors who don't sell their book because they're embarrassed by the cover. I totally remember one gentleman, and he's an expert in his industry. And I said, do you have a book? And he says, yes. I said, where is it? Why aren't you using it to promote yourself? He said, I just don't like the cover. And he felt so embarrassed by it. And I tell authors this. I said, if you don't like your cover, it's going to affect sales. Rule number one, absolutely fall in love with your cover. What are the pieces of that front cover of your book? I mean, of course, you've got the title on there. And, but how do you know that you've got the right cover? First of all, as I said, you've got to like it. I would also test your cover with mm. your target audience. I test the title. I test the subtitle. I test the look and feel of the whole cover with people, not your friends and family, because they're all going to tell you, oh, yes, I love it, whatever you put in <laughs> front of you. Or they're not going to be as critical. They're not your target audience. So let's stick with people who are buyers or potential buyers of your book. So the color you use, I mean, colors change. At the mm -hmm. moment, orange is a very in color for book covers. Anything bright, very bright, even if you just have a white cover or an off-white cover. As I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking of James Clear's Atomic Habits. I mean, you couldn't get much plainer in terms of a cover. It's this antique white cover and then big, bold Atomic Habits. And then I can't remember what his subtitle is, but whatever it is. Let's talk about the heading, the title and the subtitle too. A lot of authors spend a lot of time and then try and come up with things that are, they well, think they're being funny or they're things that don't necessarily, you don't really understand what the title is, which is fine. You can have one word or like atomic habits. It's like, well, what is that exactly? So your title is the eye catcher. It, it creates curiosity about mm -hmm. whatever it is. It, enough that people will say, well, what's this about? And that's where the subtitle is some kind of how-to. And I'm talking about nonfiction here, as right. our listeners know, that I'm focused primarily on nonfiction books. Fiction, that's a whole different area when you come to uh, titles. But the subtitle has definitely got to be able to tell people exactly what the book is about. And I always love, even if you don't actually have the words how to on the cover, mm -hmm. at least it's implied. So in my book, Riches and Niches, 
the subtitle is How to Make It Big in a Small Market. Mm -hmm. So that explains what the book is about. If you didn't really know or understand, well, what does she mean by riches in niches? Because that could be applied to many different things. But I'm talking about marketing and it's how can you make a big impression, make it rich in a niche, which is a small market. So your title is very important. Very important. Because as I said, it's got to create curiosity, which is the title, and then what the book is about. And that's where you get really granular with Mm -hmm. that, how to do something. As I said, either you actually use the words how to, or it's implied. If you've written your book, when you write your book, you usually have a title in mind or you know a working title. Is it smart to start to do some research on that, to look and see if maybe there's another book that has your same title, for instance? Yes. I mean, I always say, go and look. I mean, Amazon obviously is mm-hmm. the go-to for so many books out there now, but also just Googling the name wow. and seeing is there another title out there? Now, there are many books that have the same title, and then the differentiator is the subtitle. Mm -hmm. So there are books that have the same title, but they differentiate, and there could be in different markets, a different subtitle. There you go. Now, when you're looking at the cover of the book, a Aside from the title and the subtitle, sometimes you'll have, you know, your colors, as you mentioned earlier, right now, orange is a big flashy color, but graphics seem to play a big important part on the covers as well for catching a reader's attention. Yes. And you want your graphic to relate to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily want a sandy beach with palm trees if you're talking about leadership, let's say, unless it's about looking at retirement from leadership or something that implies that this is what the book might be about. Yeah, be careful with the graphics that you choose for the cover. You don't necessarily have to have graphics. Sometimes, as I say, just having that big, bold title that's sort of almost like in your face can be very attractive as well. Some people like using original art. As you know, we've got some authors who have used original art. They've created a cover from that. There are lots of stock photos, but also be careful of not using the same stock photos Mm -hmm. that you see on a hundred other books. You don't want that too. So you can even search your graphic to see where else it's been used and verify that it's fresh and new and not been used in the same context. Yeah. I mean, just go out there and be a little bit more cautious about what it is that's going to be on the cover. Don't feel you have to have a graphic unless it really is meaningful, as I said, to help the sale of the book, let's say. But you don't have to have one. Sometimes just plain color or some little bit of abstract art. I mean, everything's acceptable. I don't think Mm -hmm. there's anything you say, don't do this. Now, I do put a caution on the fact that should you have your picture on the front cover? Mm -hmm. And that's a question that I often get asked. If you are a celebrity in your field, Mm -hmm. having your picture there is recognizable, then yes, why not? But if you're not, it's not going to sell the book because it's like, who is this person? Now, of course, you know, somebody like Michelle Obama, you've got her picture on the front, that helps sell the book. But other than that, if you're not a celebrity in your own right, my recommendation would be not to put it on the book cover. You could put it on the back and have a, a mini bio on the back cover and you've got a smaller picture. Make sure that your picture, you're smiling, you look inviting, because everything about your book has to look inviting about this cover, Mm -hmm. because people look at the cover front, back, before they even get to open the book sometimes. So if you think about 
how you are in a bookstore. Whenever you pick up a book, it's like, I know I do, I just look at the front cover, I go and turn it over and I might read, you know, a synopsis of what the book is about. And then if you've got testimonials on the back, then I would read one or two of those. I'm getting a sense of the book before I actually open it up and look at, let's say, the table of contents before I might purchase it. There you go. So when's the best time to start working on the cover for your book? As soon as you can. Once you have firmed up a title, get that book cover designed. Maybe not Even before back. you have the book done? Oh, absolutely. Oh, There's my. no reason why not. Because if you can tell people, oh, look, I've got this book coming out and you start using it, let's say in your email signature, you've got a picture of your book. It's upcoming. It's available, you know, fall of 2022, winter of 2023, whenever. I know somebody, by the way, who had the book cover done and was selling the book two years before that book was actually physically available. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a that great model to follow. <laughs> yes. You can have postcards printed. It comes alive. And it gives you encouragement too to get the thing finished because <laughs> sometimes you get stuck and it's like, oh, is this ever going to get this out? But then you see this cover and I'm like, yes. And it, it gives you encouragement that it's going to be something real. You can touch and other people can touch and read and enjoy. I would also think that you've got some buzz going on the book and you might get some insights into your topic from talking to people about this book coming out. Very much so. Yeah. But I remember too, I, I mean, I was doing some anthologies many years ago when I was in the trade show industry. Anthologies are these compilations of 10, 12, 15, 20, sometimes different authors all appearing in one book. They're all writing about a certain topic. When I was looking to recruit people to be part of this anthology, I had the hardest time because people didn't understand what this was. But when I got the first one out and I looked to do a second edition with another set of authors, I had the first one to show them and they could see it. And it was like, oh, yeah, I want to be in the second one. That visual component is so critical when it comes to everything about the book. Susan, you mentioned some elements that are in the back cover. You're talking about testimonials. Now, if you haven't completely finished writing your book and you're looking for testimonials, how do you arrange to get those so that you have them for your cover? That's a little harder to actually get testimonials without being able to show people something. Now, I know that when authors ask me to write a testimonial, I want to read the introduction because I find that if an introduction is well written, it really tells you most about what this book is about. Mm -hmm. So that's really important for people to be able to see that. I want to see the table of contents and I want to see the introduction. I would love to be able to read every single book that crosses my desk, but that's an impossibility. So for me, being able to read the introduction to the book is key. Now, that depends on the people who you ask to write a testimonial. Mm -hmm. Some people really might want to read the whole book. Others, as I said, might be happy with the introduction. Sometimes people just want to support you in the industry and they'll write a testimonial for you, again, based on, let's say, the introduction and the items that you cover in the book, which they could see by that table of contents. Now, with the best will in the world, people will say, yes, I will write you a testimonial. Mm -hmm. The next thing is to actually get it from them. That's uh -huh. often the hardest part. You send it out, you make the request, they may say yes, and then it's crickets. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. Number one, give them a deadline for this. 
and don't give them too long because the longer you give them, the longer it's going to take. Whatever that principle is, it Peter's principle or somebody's <laughs> principle, <laughs> that the more time you give them, the longer it's going to take. Number one. Number two is you can actually write some testimonials for yourself, things that you would like people to say and offer, you know, let's say half a dozen of these to somebody and say, hey, would you like to pick one of these and have your name on it? Or in fact, here's a sample and you could adapt it so you feel more comfortable with the wording, that it sounds more like you. Those are a couple of really good tips that I find get things moving for you because people are busy. And as I said, with the best will in the world, they want to help you. They want to support you. But many times people actually don't know how to write a testimonial. Either it's not well written and so you've got to have it edited or it's too long mm -hmm. because they want to put everything in there. And can you yeah, you're use only it? aiming for what, about 50 to 75 words? Is that exactly. It? And the more concise it is, the better. But yeah, around 50 to 75 words is brilliant, which is about two sentences. Mm -hmm. Or it could be one long sentence. But yeah, a couple of sentences is all you need just to show that, hey, people have read it. Now, it's always nice to have people give you testimonials who can support you in the industry. Let's say you're in healthcare or some aspect of healthcare. You want people in the healthcare environment to be writing you a testimonial. Would it be nice to have somebody like myself, best selling author, host of an award winning podcast? Yes. But if it doesn't relate necessarily to your industry and it's going to affect sales in terms of encouraging people, in your industry to buy the book, then testimonial by me isn't necessarily going to help you per se, let's say on the cover. However, you can put umpty testimonials inside the book and take, you know, the people who've got multiple pages of testimonials. Can you have too many? No, I don't think so. But <laughs> how many of people actually going to physically read is 10? 20, 20 right. is already probably a lot. Yeah, that's a lot to round up and get into the book besides. Yeah, but that's great. And then you mentioned a synopsis of the book as well. I think of the synopsis sort of as an enticement because, you know, you flip the book over and you say, OK, so why do I really want to read this? They caught me with the title, but now tell me some more. Yes. I mean, this is where literally, and, and you may need to have someone help you write this because it's got to be very pithy and at the same time exciting. It's mm -hmm. like, what's the most exciting thing? What am I going to get out of this book? There's sort of this element of curiosity as well. People want to know exactly, as you said, why should I buy this book? What am I going to get after reading this book? Now, that again, has to be short, sweet, and to the point. And we're looking at probably, what, 100 words there, if that. Yeah. So it's condensing everything that you have to offer in your 200-page book or more into, you know, 100 words that is going to entice people, the sizzle, as they call it in <laughs> advertising, that's going to sell the steak. <laughs> there you go. I'd go and read other people's. Uh -huh. I'd go and look at other people's books. And I mean, even on Amazon, you see the back cover, read what people are saying about their own books and get ideas and see whether the ones that you read excite you. And let's say the verbs that they use, the action verbs, because mm -hmm. there are several action verbs that you can use that get people really excited. And I've got lists of words. If people need action words, just drop me an email and uh, susan at avivapubs.com. I'd be more than happy to share lists with you. Now, the last thing you mentioned was the author's photo on the back. And I've seen those as thumbnails and little brief biographies. 
Is that necessary, needed, or wanted? What's your thoughts on that? Again, if you're not known necessarily, then yes, just put a little brief bio. Again, you're looking at 100 words. And rightly, as you said, that picture is a thumbnail of you. Now, if you've got a hardcover book and you've got flaps because you've got the dust cover, then you don't need to put it on the back cover because one of the flaps, and it's usually the back flap then, which is your right-hand flap, is the one that would have your biography, that Mm -hmm. short biography of you and a larger picture. And then the front flap would have what the book's about. Mm -hmm. Let's say if it's the seven ways you're going to share about a process, you might give what the seven ways are. More of that enticement to get them to say, okay, this is a book that needs to be in my collection. Exactly. I mean, the whole thing about the cover in its entirety, whether you have a hard cover or a soft cover, this is the advertising for your book because mm-hmm. you're enticing people. You want people to buy this. You want people to get excited about having this book. It's like, oh my goodness, I've got to have this book. I'm not going to be able to live if I don't have this book and I read it. And now, reading it is another thing, but getting people <laughs> at least to buy it is one thing. People are reading less and less these days. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. They're listening, though. That's another whole thing. (laughs) That's a whole other era of expertise. (laughs) There you go. So from what you've just told me, Susan, I could get my cover out before my book is done, and I probably should get it out so that I can start my marketing campaign. Give me some of the ways that I can use that cover to support and promote this upcoming book. First of all, as I said, you can have it in your email signature. Mm -hmm. That is free real estate listeners, an area that most people don't utilize. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you utilize it. You put cover of your book. You can, as I said, say it'll be available spring, fall, winter, whatever, of whatever year. Nobody's going to hold you to that. Say you say it's the fall of 2023, and in fact, it doesn't come out until the winter of 2023. Nobody's going to hold you to that. Just put something there, you know, an approximation of when it's going to be released. That's one. Another is having postcards printed and sharing that. Let's say you do speaking engagements. You can be sharing that. That postcard could be a pre-sale opportunity. You can have it on your website, whether you have a book website or an author website, you have a page that you can direct people to, to purchase the book. Yeah. I mean, that's an opportunity to make sales beforehand. If you're doing that, decide whether you're going to sell it at a special price as a pre-sale And then remember that uh, shipping, you don't want to forget the fact that you're going to have to ship these. Either it includes free shipping or you add your five extra dollars or whatever for shipping. Wow. So there's so much that this cover does for you. It's attracting your reader. It's informing your reader. It's getting them excited about your book. It's letting them know that your book is coming As you mentioned earlier, it's the wrapping. The cover is the gift wrapping for your book, and it does make people get excited. I mean, who doesn't get excited when they see a wrapped package? Yes. (laughs) It's like people want to know what's inside. That's really what you're doing. You want to entice people to want to look inside. I mean, hey, that's why Amazon so brilliantly put up, you know, look inside, Mm -hmm. because people do want to look inside. I get very upset when I click on a book that I'm interested in and I can't look inside because I want to know what's the table of contents because I'm not going to buy a book until I really know and understand, is there something in there that I really am going to be interested in? So that whole look inside feature on Amazon or even on your own website, you can Mm -hmm. put that feature up or you can put, you know, click here to see the table of contents or click here to read a chapter get the first chapter free. 
I mean, all of that helps encourage, entice people to buy the book beforehand. You can even do an audio of the book. You can put up a book trailer. All of these things are all ways in which you can get people excited about the book before it actually comes out. I mean, think about movies. Mm -hmm. Movies, you've got trailers. You know about a film before it comes out, sometimes months, sometimes a year before it comes out. I mean, now we're talking about Harry Potter or Star Wars or something like that, but maybe yours isn't quite in that genre yet. (laughs) The fact is you can do things, you know, several months. And as I said, this one gentleman did two years before, which that was the longest I've ever known. And I was already chomping at the bit because I wanted that book. I'd already ordered it and I didn't get it for longer than I really wanted. That was a little too long for me, but it happens. People do that. So the main thing is the book is coming. And that book cover is the billboard that says it's on its way. Pay attention. This is something you want to read. Exactly. That's super. So Susan, you always ask for a golden nugget. So I am going to have the honor of asking you for your golden nugget on book covers today. My golden nugget is simply that you absolutely have to be totally in love with your cover. If there's anything you don't like, if you don't like the font, if you don't like the graphic, if you don't like anything about it, get it redone so that you do like it. I mean, I'm working with an author at the moment who published a book a couple of years ago, hates the cover. We're redoing the cover. She's maybe adding some new things into the book. But the fact is, it was the cover that she didn't like. And because she didn't like it, the book didn't sell. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Love that cover to pieces. Love your cover. That's your golden nugget. Thank you, Susan. It is. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to do this with you. I always learn so much whenever we talk and always have a great time too, but that's beside the point. So thanks, Susan. I'm so grateful that we got this chance to chat today. Thank you. I appreciate you helping me out by interviewing me. I always find that so much easier uh, when I do these. So thank you. And Listeners, by the way, if your book isn't selling the way you want or expect it to, let's you and I jump on a quick call together to brainstorm ways to ramp up those sales because you've invested a whole lot of time, money, and energy, and it's time you got the return you were hoping for. So go to brainstormwithsusan.com to schedule your free call. In the meantime, I hope this powerful interview sparks some ideas you can use to sell more books. Until next week, here's wishing you much book and author marketing success.